So hello um, and uh, welcome all to this uh, Data Spaces uh, Launchpad event. Uh, my name is Silla Sepp. I'm the programs lead at My Data Global, and uh, I will be your host uh, today um, in this webinar. Um, this event is co-organized by My Data Global and 1001 Lakes, um, and we have the pleasure to have really a lot of uh, excellent speakers today to inspire us, uh, but also provide and offer us practical guidance on uh, um, how to make data spaces a reality. We have uh, a rather packed agenda uh, today uh, to inspire us um, and to cover topics uh, around different funding opportunities, the resources library, uh, but also more broadly about uh, value creation um, in the frames of data spaces, human-centric approach to personal data, and uh, the guidance uh, we can draw from research done about the initiatives like Gaia X and uh, data spaces. But um, why? Why are we here uh, today? Um, and uh, firstly, um, I would say that uh, we want to see uh, that the concept of data spaces that has been highlighted in the EU data strategy uh, turns into uh, reality. Many uh, of you will be involved in, um, uh, in building data spaces in the near future, and we want you to succeed so that uh, um, spaces would uh, flourish. Surely funding is needed uh, for the development of uh, data spaces, and uh, we want that great ideas and uh, great people like yourselves uh, find ways to build consortia and uh, succeed in getting the necessary resources that the EU is offering. There's a lot of groundwork done on the different aspects of data spaces um, from business, legal, technological and societal perspectives, but also on different domains like uh, health, finance, mobility, skills uh, and others. And uh, you will have the chance today to learn about the pool of knowledge collected uh, to help you plan your uh, data space and, and your funding uh, proposals. Furthermore, we want to get to know you uh, and your work uh, better and help build connections uh, between you and other initiatives so that we can continue supporting you in the future uh, by facilitating this uh, community of practice around uh, data spaces. And um, finally, uh, it's important to also point out that uh, data spaces are, are just as means. Uh, the real success of data spaces is not in uh, itself, but in the impact, impact that uh, data spaces will uh, have and create in the society at large. So we want to build a shared alignment around uh, guiding principles that uh, we think are important for the impact uh, of the data spaces. Um, these are interoperability, human centricity and data sovereignty. Now, before I give the word over to our, um, our presenters, uh, just a few points about the practicalities. Um, this webinar is being recorded and will be shared later on uh, with uh, all of the participants. Uh, we encourage you to also make use of the chat function to add your comments and questions as they arise. Uh, but please note that um, uh, for most of the presentations, we unfortunately don't have the chance to take questions right away um, after their um, presentations. Um, but uh, this said, we'll, there will be a dedicated time uh, in the second part of this webinar where you'll have uh, the chance to also discuss about today's topics more in depth uh, and bring up, bring up any and questions and then. So uh, in case you have any um, problems with technicalities, do reach out to Carolina in the chat, uh, who will be also monitoring you and will uh, help you out uh, there. We ask you to also keep yourselves uh, muted uh, uh, for the time being of the presentations so that there's no interruptions coming uh, from, uh, from the yeah, uh, sound system. But uh, uh, let's continue then with our first uh, presentation. And uh, I'll welcome on our virtual uh, stage Antti Yogi Poikola, uh, who is the chairman of the board of MyData Global and uh, a lead expert in data economy and information policy at the technology industries of Finland. And uh, uh, Yogi will talk about MyData human-centric approach to personal data. Please. 
Yes, good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. So I'm, I'm chair of the board for My Data Global and it's my honor to be here as first one of the uh, list of uh, presenters here. So I'm going to introduce you very quickly. My Data, probably many of you are uh, familiar with it, but also kind of the connection with uh, the data spaces idea and why we are here. Uh, so, uh, my data aims for fair and sustainable and prosperous digital society through human centric approach to personal data. So uh, this means that people should always get value out of their data and set agenda on how it is used. Uh, and this should mean for organizations that it's uh, the ethical use of personal data is always most attractive options. So probably it's not yet in this uh, state. So there are uh, unfortunately very attractive and lucrative uh, options that are not so ethical, uh, but we believe that it's uh, possible to balance this picture. And obviously data spaces are not only about personal data. So there will be data from companies flowing in the data spaces and similar ideas can be uh, extended also to companies that companies should get value out of their data as well. So this is what is meant by the data sovereignty. So the same uh, principles apply to people as well as, as to organizations. So in order to get there where my data aims at, we have identified uh, three big shifts that have to take place in the society. And you can find these from uh, our declaration, mydata.org-declaration, which you can also sign as an uh, individual person or on behalf of your organization. So first of all, we need to move from formal to actionable rights. So we have a good uh, pieces of legislation in place, especially in Europe. Uh, well, maybe some legislation could be even uh, improved, uh, but generally the problem is not uh, on the lack of re regulation, but sometimes and quite often these regulations don't move automatically from from the black letter law to something that uh, influences in the services and day-to-day -day activities of people. So uh, we want uh, to, uh, to have these actionable rights for people over uh, their data. And uh, other thing is that we want to move from uh, the idea of data protection only to empower with data. And uh, I, I often say that, um, yeah, people who are in prisoner, they, they are sheltered, they are protected, but they don't have freedom. So in the same way, we do want to have protection, data protection, but we also want to have freedom for people to benefit out of their data. So this means uh, the word empowerment. Uh, and uh, the third shift is very closely related to word interoperability that Sille mentioned in the um, introduction. So we believe that these uh, info, uh, data sharing infrastructures, they have to be open. They cannot be closed ecosystems or there may be some closed sections uh, sharing data between friends, so to say. Uh, but generally, uh, we believe very much in the open ecosystems and want to uh, built for interoperability and standards. My data uh, was mentioned in the European data strategy. We are very happy and proud about this this mention. So uh, it said there that my data is one uh, is recognized uh, as one of the movements that promise significant benefits to individuals, including their health and wellness, better personal finances, reduced environmental footprint, hassle-free access to public and private services, and greater oversight and transparency over their personal data. Uh, yes. This is where we want to go uh, and there are things to do before that. And that's the reason why my data is uh, very much involved in, in the uh, development of the common European data spaces. So we are one member of this uh, team data spaces. You can find it data spaces for, uh, for .eu. Uh, there are many other very good uh, partners in this consortium. And the reason why my data is involved in this uh, data spaces development is that we want to introduce the human centric approach into European data spaces. There are many, many other uh, kind of good reasons also for data sharing coming from industry, uh, like uh, companies sharing uh, data in, in uh, between them. Uh, and that's fine. But at and, and some point, there are also many data spaces that will deal about uh, personal data and our uh, 
worry, which we kind of try to turn uh, into uh, op opportunity, is that uh, uh, maybe not everything that works for non-personal data is applicable for personal data. But on the other side, uh, if you take into uh, consideration the requirements uh, related to personal data, we can create uh, data sharing infrastructure that is applicable for industries as well for people and good for both. Uh, and the other reason is that we want to in, um, increase the interoperability of data spaces and uh, also to see the role of uh, so-called data intermediaries in the data spaces. There may be data spaces that do not require any data intermediaries, but probably there are many data spaces where this concept of data intermediaries is important. And that leads to the concept of my data operators, which are interconnected and human centric data intermediaries. So uh, many of you know about the Data Governance Act. It was just uh, agreed uh, the final deal be, uh, in the European Commission and the uh, regulation will come into enforce uh, early next year. So uh, the Data Governance Act defines a uh, class of uh, organizations that act as data intermediaries between the data sources and the data using services facilitating the flow of data in trusted manner and uh, my data operators are such data intermediaries when it comes to personal data and uh, my data global have done uh, for two years this uh, process of uh, 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 self-description of these data, op um, my data operators and awarding those who have gone through the process. And the idea is that we want to be build interoperability from bottom up between these data intermediaries. And the idea of data intermediary simply is to facilitate personal uh, uh, flow of personal data in the ecosystems. So traditionally, uh, say, uh, some organization uh, collects data, manages it and uses it. Uh, so in the future, we see that data collection may happen in one place and the management can happen uh, human centrically with the help of uh, my data operators. And therefore, uh, the data that was once collected in one place can be actually used in many purposes. And, and this uh, leads to the concept of uh, ecosystems where there are several data sources, several data using services and these uh, my data operators who make uh, everything tick in between those. So basically a data source, uh, let's say my watch uh, that uh, collects health data uh, can be connected to one uh, uh, operator, maybe data using service, uh, let's say health diary app can be connected to another operator and me myself, I could be connected to another operator. And in like we have, uh, telecom network where you can take a phone and call to somebody else, even if they have their other uh, telecom uh, service provider and it all works in harmonized uh, manner. So this is what we also envision for the future of data sharing. Uh, so we think that there is a significant role for scalability uh, with the data intermediaries. And yes, network effects, we don't expect everybody to connect to one and same operator and interoperability, it must be possible to change operator without breaking things. So this is my uh, simple glimpse of ideas why my data is in the data spaces business and how the my data operators and data intermediaries connect to the picture. Uh, we have published a couple of white papers and these will be included in the uh, a library of uh, data spaces, uh, reference materials that will be published later in this, uh, this uh, webinar today. So I'm happy to invite everybody who are interested in the role of uh, personal data and human centricity in the data spaces to chat with me on the breakout session. Thank you. Thank you, Yogi. And uh, already the comments in the chat see, uh, show that there is a great uh, alignment and also uh, further points to, to share during that breakout. Next up, we have uh, Kimo Rossi from uh, the DG, uh, DG Connect at the European Commission to join us. Um, Kimo is the head of research and innovation sector, and uh, he will be talking about uh, what are the different funding opportunities that will uh, be opening up uh, for creating data spaces. So the floor is yours, Kimo. 
Thank you very much uh, for offering me this uh, opportunity to talk about uh, the funding opportunities for data spaces. Uh, the timing is very good because we have uh, open calls for proposals uh, in uh, two different programs, in the Digital Europe program and in the Horizon Europe program. So I will just briefly outline uh, what we have on the table right now. And, uh, but first I will outline the uh, policy and regulatory uh, background uh, for what we are doing uh, in data spaces. So um, as Antti Poikola already mentioned, uh, um, there was a European strategy for data published uh, as a, um, a commission communication in uh, February, uh, 2020. Uh, and uh, it uh, sets out the big plan uh, for uh, improving uh, data sharing and uh, putting in place a data economy where data assets can be can be traded like any commodity can be shared and traded either for free or against payment depending on the on the situation and uh, the nature of the data and the desires of the data holders uh, there are two main pillars uh, in the strategy uh, there is a, a legislative and governance framework um, and the first part of that is already um, almost adopted. So as uh, Antti Poikola uh, uh, outlined already everything actually that you need to know about Data Governance Act. So I don't have to go into that, that detail um, uh, about how it governs data intermediaries and data altruism, for example. Uh, and uh, um, the um, Adoption of that uh, governance act is uh, is uh, imminent now that uh, political agreement has been reached between the European Parliament and the Council. But uh, that is not enough. Why do we also need the data act? Data act has not yet been published as commission proposals, but we are working uh, full speed on it. It will probably come out in the first quarter of next year. Uh, because data governance act does not. Uh, uh, regulate business-to-business uh, -business data sharing or business-to-government data sharing. And this is the most difficult and complex area. So we need an act that would put some legal certainty of how data can be shared uh, between economic operators, between citizens when it's uh, uh, citizen data, when it's personal data held by, by uh, platforms, commercial platforms. Uh, who has the uh, right to use data for what purpose? Especially in co-generation situations where uh, where there are complex uh, ownership situations uh, like um, uh, smart cars or agricultural machines with sensors producing data, is the data owned by the um, by the uh, developer of the sensor or the or the agricultural machine or the owner of the uh, so uh, the, the farmer himself, the owner of the machine? Uh, all these need to be regulated because there's a legal vacuum otherwise about uh, who uh, owns the data and who can set the uh, conditions for the use of data and who can uh, take the benefit from the data and the value. Value creation is very important as uh, Antti uh, outlined. Um, this legislation is meant to facilitate value creation because uh, because uh, you need legal certainty for, for, for doing that. There's also the Implementing Act on High Value Data Sets, which is complementing the Open Data Directive. And the, the purpose of this Implementing Act is to make certain uh, types of very valuable data, like business registers, uh, or for weather data, for example, or uh, geo uh, data, uh, available uh, in machine-readable format through APIs so that it's very easily reusable. Uh, data which is already open, but it's not so easily usable. Um, then the other pillar, of course, uh, is the practical uh, pillar, the, uh, the executive arm, the common European data spaces in strategic sectors and domains of interest. I have uh, a few words later on that. But also I would like to draw your attention to the commission proposal for uh, artificial intelligence regulation, which is also available and uh, waits to be, be adopted by the lawmaker because it also contains requirements uh, for data governance of high risk uh, AI applications. Uh, this uh, regulation uh, divides the uh, AI um, applications in different categories depending on the risk. The low risk applications are not uh, regulated at all 
and the high risk had the highest degree of regulation, especially also the data uh, that is used for uh, developing the AI system is uh, regulated and the quality and uh, fairness of the data um, uh, and so on. So uh, what are data spaces? They are concrete arrangements in which data sharing and pooling can happen. They are not necessarily uh, repositories, uh, physical repositories, uh, because uh, the data sharing paradigm can very well um, rely on a distributed uh, structure that where, where the data continues to reside where it is and it will never uh, leave the, that, uh, uh, that place uh, and that it is harvested by different means uh, uh, from, from those uh, uh, locations. So there is a lot of flexibility on what is the architecture of the data space. It can be very different for the different uh, sectors, which you see, see here in the, the bottom of the screen. This is not an exhaustive list uh, of uh, sectors. Um, um, then we have these two funding programs. Horizon Europe will fund the technology basis and Digital Europe program will fund the implementation and the deployment and the actual operations of and the coordination of the data spaces. There is obviously, there are lots of links with national uh, and sectoral data sharing schemes like My Data, like Gaia X, and all these links uh, uh, will, be, uh, will be made also when setting up the data spaces under uh, the, the Digital Europe program. Digital Europe is a completely new program, so it supports the operations, deployment, infrastructures, um, and uh, it's, uh, it's about populating, uh, coordinating and operating the data spaces. It's not about uh, research and development. For that purpose, we have uh, the uh, Horizon Europe program. There are some specificities if you are interested in participating in Digital Europe projects. First of all, most of the data space topics, not all of them, but most of them, are, uh, have uh, uh, apply Article 12.6 of the Digital Europe regulation, which puts conditions for applicants that are con uh, controlled by third countries, so non-European countries. So this means companies that are established in the EU as legal entity, but they are controlled by non-EU uh, shareholders. So there are restrictions. Uh, uh, so that's um, one thing. Uh, and the program is open to EU countries only plus European economic area and, and the countries that uh, will, uh, will associate to the uh, Digital Europe program, unless otherwise specified in the core text. So this is different than in the Horizon Europe program because Horizon Europe is by definition open to the world, uh, but Digital Europe is not. Um, uh, also uh, a specificity that the beneficiaries, the applicants, all the applicants to the project are subject to financial capacity uh, assessment so that they are financially viable. Uh, and disclaimer, if, I, uh, if anything that I say is in a contradiction with what is said in the funding and tenders portal in the call documents, then uh, you should believe what is in the portal and, uh, and not me. Uh, this is a quick glance, glance of what is currently open uh, for, um, uh, for submission in uh, uh, for applications in the Digital Europe uh, program. The deadline for these calls is uh, the 22nd of uh, February next year. So it's easy to remember, 22-22. That's the date, the deadline uh, for all these calls. Most of these data spaces will start with a preparatory action, as you can see from the, from the description. So it's a small uh, CSA project, coordination and support action project, typically with 1 million or 2 million euro funding with one important exception, which is the first one, the genomics uh, data space or Federated European Infrastructure for Genomics Data, which is a, a, a huge operation that starts right away with 20 million euro funding. If you are interested in the genomics data space, uh, don't miss the info day next week. So the link is there on the slide. Um, so it's very lucky timing for this event that it's still ahead because many of the uh, data spaces actually have already had their info days. Um, uh, but next week there will also be the info day on the Green Deal uh, data space, the preparatory action for the Green Deal data space. That's the other link on this screen. Uh, always uh, check the uh, first hand information, which is the work program and the call document, which you will find on this link in the funding and tenders portal. 
it's very important to read through the call document because it contains all the specific conditions. Each of these data spaces may come equipped with different uh, conditions for participation. And it's important that, that you look into the call document, what are the specific uh, uh, conditions. Also have a look at the model grant agreement, which you can find on the, on the portal. And there's a partner search facility. If you are uh, searching partners, uh, make that known to others uh, by registering in the partner search facility. Then a, a few words about uh, Horizon Europe, because it's uh, connected. As I said uh, in the beginning, uh, we are supporting technology, so research and development that supports the data spaces, because we cannot, we cannot fund uh, research and development in digital Europe, but we fund that in Horizon Europe in order to support um, uh, the data spaces. There are some uh, features, new features in the, the Horizon Europe that did not uh, were not so prominent in the, uh, prominent in the previous uh, uh, framework program, Horizon 2020. And one of them is green transition. You will see that in almost all topics of Horizon Europe. So, for example, in the data topics, uh, we are also now requiring a green data operations with a smaller uh, energy footprint. Uh, competitiveness and sovereignty of European industry, the autonomy, strategic autonomy of European industry is, is a new uh, uh, value uh, mainstreamed in the Horizon Europe program. And resilience values, uh, European values, uh, democracy, uh, and uh, also sort of a human um, uh, approach. Uh, there's, as a result, there is more integration, more cross-disciplinarity and societal dimension than there was in the, in the previous program. And therefore, the, uh, there's need to identify uh, and involve new stakeholders and constituencies in the, in the proposals. Uh, we also have a new European partnership on AI, data, and robotics. So it's uh, building on uh, two previous partnerships that we had, the Big Data Value Partnership, the BDVA. Some of you may uh, know that some of you are members of BDVA. Uh, and the robotics partnership. And this new partnership is bringing these two old partnerships together and adding the uh, AI community. Um, then uh, I will quickly just run through the Horizon Europe topics that are relevant for data spaces. And the first one is the most relevant um, because it's technologies and solutions for uh, data monetization, exchange, and interoperability. This is the fact sheet about uh, the, the topic. Uh, so 52 million euro available, uh, large projects of 10 to 30 million uh, euro each. Um, so this call is now open and it will close on the 5th of April next year. Um, so this is, we are here, we are calling for innovation actions. So rather practical actions um, uh, that would uh, mm, enable this kind of uh, data spaces for closed data, data that, uh, that uh, where you have uh, the interest to protect uh, the data or follow up the later reuse of that data uh, and to be able to monetize on your data assets. Uh, so smart contracts, uh, things like that, uh, following up the use of the data and, and caching uh, and uh, invoicing for, for the use of data. Um, we already had uh, a call that closed and we evaluate, actually we, uh, we evaluated the proposals this week uh, that was on privacy preserving technologies and compliance technologies. So that was the other Horizon Europe topic supporting data spaces, but that's already closed. So that's why I don't have it on the, on the slides. But this one that I have on the slide is complementing that one. Then we have topic for uh, extreme analytics. So extreme analytics on extreme data. So uh, deriving extremely useful analysis results from uh, very difficult data, very large data, very dispersed data, uh, uh, data containing errors and omissions. Uh, and uh, this is also, this is a research uh, and innovation action also open uh, for uh, submissions as well as extreme data mining. So data mining now on uh, difficult large, uh, uh, disparate uh, and um, um, heterogeneous data, uh, especially in view of using that data as um, uh, to create uh, pipelines for using that data in AI uh, system development. 
that uh, concludes my presentation. I think my time is up. Thank you. Thank you, Kimmo, for, for the, all of this information. I see lots of discussion already in the chat uh, to search for partners uh, for uh, those funding calls as well as uh, uh, as others. There is a question also to you regarding um, the, the funding opportunities and uh, from, from Mikael, uh, I'll read it out for you. Uh, within GaiaX, there has been discussion on whether some uh, GaiaX approved use cases would get a uh, preference in getting uh, Horizon Europe funding, or alternatively, if some Horizon Europe funding could be earmarked for GaiaX. Um, have you heard anything about these topics uh, or anything that you can share about it? The, the current calls, the three topics of Horizon Europe that I presented on the slides, uh, uh, they are uh, normal competitive calls so that no priority is given to any particular stakeholder group. Uh, they are uh, evaluated in, in uh, uh, evaluations by independent experts that will be, sc be scoring them according to three criteria excellence, impact, and implementation. And uh, uh, so, no, there is no such uh, preference treatment in the current calls. Um, and I think it will be difficult to introduce that also in the future calls, because it would be against, uh, uh, you know, the equal treatment of applicants, which is very, very deeply rooted in the legal basis of the Horizon Europe program. But what it what we do require in uh, in the work program text from these topics uh, is to create the links to Gaia X and other uh, national, uh, 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 supranational, uh, regional, or sectoral activities. That is a requirement that uh, the applicants have to fulfill in their proposal. And if they don't, they will be penalized in the evaluation. So, so that may be uh, is the way how the link to Gaia X can be made. Thank you for this clarification. Uh, we do have time for still one more uh, question, as unfortunately Kimo uh, uh, cannot stay for us uh, for the for the breakout uh, sessions later on. But uh, is there any other questions from the audience right now about the funding opportunities? I have a question. It's Frederick from Sweden, my data Sweden. Uh, what about the, the north-south connection, um, meaning Europe and Africa? I know these are European projects, but are there any possibilities of making such a connection and what would be the appropriate mechanisms for that? Okay, we, we currently don't have such a specific dedicated action programmed, but uh, if you have uh, an idea what that would uh, what value that would bring, uh, you know, we are open to new ideas for the next work program because we have already draft, started the drafting of the next biannual work program 23-24. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, we are open, open for good ideas, but, but you know, uh, you have to specify what would be the, uh, uh, what would be the, uh, the concept and, and what would be the benefit from it and how it would link to the, to the big plan uh, in the data strategy. Thank you. In the Horizon Europe program, program, as it's open to the world, we do have this possibility to address uh, non-EU countries. So in principle, that uh, possibility exists. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, Sila, can I ask another question? Sure, go ahead. Thank you. Question is about cross data space uh, initiative because the way you show it it's very much kind of uh, per sector uh, which is very in a way siloed while as citizen um, we are interested to actually to have a, a complete view and that may be interested as well from a, a, um, an analytic perspective and coming from help where is my sector uh, we are uh, for help there is impact by finance by mobility by everything we do around so is there anything to work cross data space and bring some cross data space view? Uh, very good question. Uh, uh, and uh, yes, uh, that, that, that is an important aspect. Now, uh, creating sectoral data spaces uh, was seen uh, um, after public consultations as the, as the only way to concretely move ahead uh, uh, because, because it allows to start operating things. Uh, uh, it's concrete and you can only do that sectorally. 
Uh, however, uh, at the same time, we have to establish links uh, between data spaces. And one thing is for simply the, the technical uh, uh, architectural layers, for example, uh, interoperability uh, of data, uh, standardization. These kind of aspects are horizontal, and we have to work uh, across data spaces to allow, uh, as you said, also the flow of data between uh, the sectors and between the data spaces. And the instrument for that in, in the um, Digital Europe program is the Data Spaces Support Center, which is also uh, in the first call. Uh, it's a large coordination and support action, 14 million euros. So it's, it's much bigger than the usual CSAs, which are one and, between one and two million euros. And it has a long duration uh, for about 40 months duration. So uh, it will be, uh, it will guide through the transition where we would uh, probably have to find a more um, permanent governance model for, for co coordinating the data spaces than just one uh, CSA project, but it, it, that will, it will start the work uh, on the uh, horizontal um, issues uh, around work, uh, all data spaces, and, and it will also do all the coordination between uh, the data spaces. While we are waiting for a more permanent uh, a structure and uh, and a legal legal framework legal entity uh, to to take over thank you uh, there is one more question about um in how one gets involved in the in shaping forthcoming calls but uh, if you uh, don't mind if you have the chance uh, you could uh, answer that in the in the chat and we would continue right away then uh, with yeah. our next presentation thank you Kimo. So uh, next up, we have Marko Durpani, Durpeinen, uh, who is a CEO of uh, 1001 Lakes, a, consult a consultancy firm in, uh, in Finland. And uh, Marko has done a, a great work in putting together a lot of uh, uh, resources uh, that show the different ingredients uh, for creating uh, successful data spaces. So uh, please go ahead, Marko. Thank you, Sille, and uh, and and really excited to be here today and uh, and hearing how how Europe is really taking now the the next next couple of years in in speeding up with the data spaces development and uh, and and truly uh, interesting years ahead. Um, so I'm gonna um, tell you here a little bit about the endeavor that. Uh, we have uh, started to uh, put together a resource library for things related to data spaces and, uh, um, and maybe uh, just a, a bit of a background. So, so where this is coming from uh, also is that, uh, that in, um, in, in this fall, we uh, uh, did a study uh, with the Ministry of uh, Transport and Communications in Finland. Um, which then resulted one of the outcomes of the of the of the work was a, a report that was called State of Data Spaces 2021, which was kind of a snapshot that well this is what's happening around data spaces. This is sort of the the overall you know initiatives, the 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 the, the targets, and, and and where we are at this moment. But already then with the ministry, we kind of discussed that it would be great to actually have this as a resource that's alive and being updated and becoming open and, and, and inclusive. So that's what we are doing now. So we are, we are publishing this now as the kind of a first step to have a, a really a resource uh, for everybody uh, to uh, to keep in in you know uh, keep aligned and also uh, um, up to date to what's happening around data spaces. Um, this uh, work is also supported by uh, uh, Ministry of Economic Affairs and Employment of Finland. So uh, so this is uh, uh, um, has has good backing from from the Finnish uh, government. But uh, so so what did we then, uh, how have we structured this uh, resource library? So this uh, division of, of contents actually comes from the state of data spaces report very much. Uh, and, uh, and so we have, first of all, kind of intro to fundamentals. What are the concepts, key concepts that are being used? How can we kind of have a, a broader design framework that we, we could use for data spaces? So that's the beginning. Then we have listed some of the key initiatives, key organizations that are working now uh, related to data spaces. 
then key regulations, so DGA, uh, Digital Govern uh, Data Governance Act was mentioned already many times. So there's Data Act coming. There are you know other things, of course. GDPR is there. So so many many uh, aspects related to regulation that will have a strong impact on what's happening around data spaces. So so we'll we'll try to keep that up to date. Then we have this sort of a soft infrastructure part, and uh, and and that's more sort of the the, the generic building blocks is building blocks the, the the components that are used to then create these different data spaces, which more or less should be common for all data spaces, and then those can be then divided into trust the building blocks and uh, and interoperability and uh, data value and governance building blocks. Uh, for example, but nevertheless, so, so the idea here is that it's sort of the, what are the, the tools with which you can start building these uh, 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 data spaces. And then, uh, well, we've used uh, recently this kind of a split between when we think about data spaces, so you can think about them as common. So, so we talk about common European data space for health, for example. So, so it really is the idea of, okay, we have agreed for the sector of health, how do we deal with interoperability of especially health related data and uh, so for example you know how do these sector specific needs are met so that's done at the data space as commons level but then you have all of these different groupings of organizations and and actors uh, who then use the data spaces and you can think of that as a, that as a different view which is data spaces as ecosystems that are evolving and uh, and then are using and also cross connecting between different uh, sectors so we talked about the the, the cross domain already uh, you know uh, in the Q&A with Kimmo so so that's really important also that these ecosystems can can you know, find their use cases also in a way that combines different sectors. That's really important. And then the funding opportunities. So this is the structure in the library. And really the library is actually, a, a, well, basically a set of these sort of a, a, a summary pages um, as Google Docs at this moment, we might change it in the future, but currently it's a set of Google Docs pages that look a little bit like this, or they look exactly like this. So this is sort of the framework that we use used. Uh, so key facts, core ideas, links to the material, but also then is this related to regulation? Is this related to the framework standardization or, or is it the building blocks thing? And then if it's more domain specific, so which domains are included? So that's kind of the, the overall framework that we used in this library now. And uh, and then just to show a little bit what the content that then looks like. So, uh, so under the fundamentals, so as said, there's the key terminology and this is something that we really Really want to expand because there's plenty of terms and also there is no one single clear crisp yes everybody understands data space like this so also having this as a as a living part of the document that well how do we understand these different terms is is important um, and then there was this uh, uh, data spaces design principles uh, framework so so uh, so that's also a good starting point if you uh, uh, want to get more into the topic of data spaces so I can recommend to read this uh, um, uh, white paper that came out out uh, in the spring and actually is now being uh, uh, updated so you can expect an, the the 2.0 version of the design principles paper to come in uh, in in well first first half of next year for sure anyway so so this is kind of how the the uh, different uh, resources have been uh, set up here i will just show just another well okay so here's one point as well that some of these things like gaia x so they are in several different parts of this resource library so Gaia X is a big initiative. It's a key initiative, but also it's providing soft infrastructure. So for example, then if I go a little bit further, so under soft infrastructure, we have um, here Gaia X Federation services, which are concretely the building blocks now that are being developed as part of Gaia X that everybody should start using if you want to be Gaia X compliant. So anyway, so the same you know, different views of the same initiative can be under different parts of this, this library now. Um, and um, so, um, well, I mean, here is an example of, 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 uh, of an updated one. So we 
already under the my data uh, uh, web pages so there is a form i think uh, yogi also uh, posted a link already so where you can submit your uh, uh, proposals for this library and this is something that fireware already submitted and i updated this morning so uh, so please do the same this is now really uh, meant to be a live document and uh, we try to be responsive if you have uh, updates and uh, and so forth um then um just to uh, maybe to to bring a, a kind of a segue to our next speaker so uh, so Marianne is so I'll just show uh, data sharing coalition uh, which is a, a Dutch initiative uh, which uh, includes uh, uh, really broadly the industry and different actors in the Netherlands and 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 also here there is a kind of a nice uh, example of how this is in several places so then data sharing coalition also created this nice tool that you can use which is called data sharing canvas when you have different uh, uh, different uh, ecosystem different networks and you need to figure out how they work so uh, so this is an excellent tool for that so anyway that was a quick uh, run through of what we have come up with and, and really encourage everybody to uh, uh, take a look and, uh, and 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 also contribute as said uh, this is going to be uh, much better if we uh, do this together so uh, thank you very much and uh, and then i think it's marianne's turn Thank you. Uh, and thank you for all your work in putting the resource together. Uh, the link for uh, where to uh, co um, contribute uh, with your own resources have been shared in the chat and will be also sent to you all uh, later on. But indeed, uh, our next speaker is Marianne Terven. Um, she is the director and data sharing lead at consulting firm uh, Inope. Uh, and uh, due to her work uh, with organizations in adopting a, a more open outlook, uh, collaborating across uh, different ecosystems and creating new value. I think uh, she's in a definitely a great position to uh, talk about value creation in uh, data spaces. So the floor is yours, Marianne. Well, thanks, Sheila, and thanks, everybody. It's really exciting to be here, actually. It feels like, uh, in a way, we're taking off and we're going to build these uh, data spaces. And uh, I think it's going to be a very next, uh, very interesting next era, uh, next decade that we're uh, ahead. And we better make it work because we've got a lot to gain there. So uh, thanks for the introduction, Silo. Uh, Silla, thanks for having me. Um, Inope is a consultancy firm, and we focus to help our customers, um, yeah, um, harness the full potential of digital transactions. Which means we have services in payments, digital identity, and data sharing. And of course, today we talk about data sharing. And um, so we, we do, of course, um, help individual customers, but we, are very, we have a lot of experience in helping ecosystems or groups of customers, groups of organizations in setting up trust frameworks for data sharing. And in a way, um, these trust frameworks, of course, are, you could say they were data spaces before the word was coined. So I saw a question in the chat earlier, uh, how many data, is there a list of the data spaces? Well, of course, there's a list of data spaces right now that, that get stimulation, et cetera. But basically, data spaces is really uh, a concept, uh, just like um, was explained before. And I think you can have data spaces in, in, in a lot of sectors. So um, we used concepts that we worked with in the payments industry, um, in payment schemes and digital identity schemes, and we transferred that to the data space arena. So we um, uh, recently we created, we co-created with a lot of parties, a scheme for uh, data sharing and logistics, which is called iShare. And we will put it in the resource library as well. It's a, it's a public scheme, you can, you can look it up. And we're also involved in creating schemes around construction right now and education materials. Um, and, and as Marco pointed out uh, in, in his presentation, we are also facilitating the Data Sharing Coalition. And that is a initiative uh, of a lot of uh, organizations, not just Dutch organizations, international organizations, cooperating to see how we can uh, 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 make sure that we also keep in mind the cross-sectoral data sharing. So all this work has made us also quite opinionated. 
And that is why we are a um, very active member of the team data spaces. And we're also, we also initiated the data space, uh, sorry, <laughs> the, the data sovereignty now campaign. And uh, in this campaign, together with a lot of like-minded organizations like my data, but also like other organizations who are also, some of them are online, um, we, we campaign for data sovereignty uh, to, to make it part of regulation in Europe, because we th really think it's the only way to go. And I'd like to uh, use the three key messages from Data Sovereignty Now to kind of structure my story. So the first key message is, uh, we think data sovereignty should be a key design principle and um, for everything we do. And I think it's very clear in the data strategy and also in all the calls for proposal that this is a very adamant request actually for the, for the architecture of the data spaces. And, what does data sovereignty mean in our vocabulary? Well, it's the capacity for people and organizations to govern their data, to know who holds their data, under what conditions, where their data is kept, but above all, to use their data in other contexts. And that is, I think, um, if we can nail that one, we have a great launchpad in Europe for a fl flowering and blossoming uh, human-centric data economy. Now, the second key message is we feel that we need soft infrastructure to enable this data sharing. So uh, as I think it was Joby who said, you know, it's not just formal rights uh, that we want to have. We also want to have means to exercise those rights. And what is a soft infrastructure? Well, a soft infrastructure is a set of agreements a set of agreements, functional agreements, technical, operational, legal agreements that make data sharing work in practice. And actually, that's what data spaces are all about, creating an open ecosystem of agreements that's open to everybody and that will facilitate them to create value. And the third key message is let's focus on adoption. Yeah. So, and I think this is key for everybody um, yeah, working in data spaces and, and, and thinking about uh, starting endeavors and calls, it all starts with the use cases and the adoption. Because in the end, uh, the data space, of course, as, and we know that as we are in the call, the data space is nothing else as a facilitator to create new business models. Now, the whole idea of just the sheer monetization of data, the sheer the business models of extraction data and monetizing them without people and organizations even knowing it, um, that's not sustainable anymore. We need new business models and we need new business cases and use cases. And we have already a lot of proof of them. And I think that's really where the value is also in your proposals to focus on the creation of value the value creation. And <clears throat> so um, let me give you an example uh, of one of these, uh, oh, sorry, let, let, let's put it a, a little bit different. In our experience with these trust frameworks that we've already built, there is a lot of new value to be created. And it's not just about the monetization of data. So Within iShare, we've got some proof of that. And also in the data sharing coalition, there are a lot of use cases that are being worked on that really are about the value that the products and services are going to deliver based on this sharing of data. So let me give you one example. And this is an example of the data sharing coalition. And we will also share it in the resource library. It's all uh, public information. So this is the case, which is called the green loans case. So in this case, it's actually about, uh, if you want to look at it from a, lot, from a helicopter perspective, this is about kind of stimulating also the energy transition. So this case is about people having a smart meter in their home to measure their electricity. And the distribution system operators, the ones who, who uh, deliver the electricity to your home, 
they deliver this smart meter to your home and they have the data from your smart meter. However, this data is, uh, how you say it, uh, is earmarked as being personal data. Now, we also have financial service providers and they are very interested in creating new propositions to stimulate energy transitions and people doing uh, giving mortgages, higher mortgages or giving loans to um, enable people to, to uh, have their house better equipped and have lower energy bills. So they're very interested in this data that is for them a data point to create this new service. But how are they going to get access to the data of the smart meter? And within the data sharing coalition, these two ecosystems, so the ecosystem of the financial service providers and the ecosystem of the distribution system operators have created this use case in which the financial service operator starts a uh, request for a transaction and the consumer actually gives consent to the distribution system operator to enable the financial service provider to get access to the data, the energy data of the smart meter. And this enables them to get access to that data to really create new services. And right now, there are a couple of financial uh, service providers uh, actually creating propositions around that. So here you see that the value creation is not just for the financial service operator who will, of course, uh, improve their uh, competitive advantage with these new propositions, but it's also for the consumer who will get a lower interest rate for his loans. So that is just one example of uh, cross-sector value creation. And um, yeah, so with this, I would like to stress um, and also like to conclude that we are uh, very much uh, cheering to this whole development, we see data spaces as a soft infrastructure. We also see a very important task for the data space support center in creating almost a common soft infrastructure underneath all the data spaces to really create interoperability and decentralization. And um, yeah, we feel there should be no new service or product um, uh, developed without delivering its users data sovereignty, be it people or organizations, every new service or product should uh, provide their users um, data sovereignty and uh, tilt the data benefit balance in their direction by creating value for all. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mariana. Really great points raised and uh... I'm sure this has already triggered uh, many new points that uh, you can continue discussing in the in the breakout uh, session in a bit. But uh, let's go then also move to our last but not least uh, presentation uh, from Domo Duica. Uh, Domo works as uh, as the data space solution lead at VTT, um, uh, which is the technical research center of Finland, and uh, yeah has done a lot of. Uh, research for, for successful data space design and, uh, and development. Um, Tomo, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Can you see my slides? Yes, we can. All right, so so thank you for the, the, the invitation and, and the presentation. Uh, yeah, so so I have here also, I'm, besides I'm being VTT, so I'm also the Big Data Value Association co-chair on data spaces, working group with uh, the professor Ed, Ed Curry from Insight Center in Ireland. And uh, we have been do, uh, doing this, this uh, data spaces, working at BDVA for quite some time and, and uh, uh, publishing research uh, and, and uh, papers and, and white papers and, and and so on in order to 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 think uh, look at that what what kind of thing is this this, uh, this data space the spaces all together uh, vtt is also quite uh, a lot involved in, in different uh, developments so so we are in the gaiax aisbl and and uh, and we are also idsa finland hub and and uh, as, as was mentioned also in the ADRA and, and, and so on, that's very important to be connected in this, these times when the digital <clears throat> uh, transition, digital market is, is, uh, is developing. And especially it's, it's of course for an RTO, research and technology organization, the colleagues in Europe, such as TNO or Fraunhofer are very important colleagues to look at, look at the developments. 
So <clears throat> the, the role of, of research organization in, in this European scene is, is evidently to, to do research and and as I said, we, we did especially is a technical research center and, and we concentrate on new solutions and, and applications and, and technical advancements. But with, with data spaces, especially, we have been learning that, that collaboration is central in, to converge the efforts to, to have this, this make, make this digital market happen. <clears throat> so for us, the first thing to, to uh, create European data spaces is to do piloting and, and experimentation, connect data of, of ecosystem partners and design the, the ecosystem and, and solutions so that it complies with the regulation and values and approaches which are, are now shared in, in, in Europe. Uh, common standards, of course, uh, will support the building of, of, the, of the digital market. And, uh, and there's quite a lot of development happening at the same time. And, and we are <coughs> sort of like constructing a conceptual framework, but at the same time learning from practice and, and by building and experimenting. There are a lot of projects running even now that, that which are looking at that, uh, different aspects of, of data spaces, how, how they form. So in Finland, VTT is involved in, the, of, uh, in these developments, if you sandboxes, if you wish, and, and uh, in many cities, for example, and, and in the picture, there's, uh, the, there's Tampere, which especially is, is uh, and, and in, the specialty is, is in transportation and traffic. And uh, in the city of Espo, is, there's an area called Smart Autonomy, which connects facilities, transportation, energy solutions. And, and in the city of Oulu, there's Oulu data space, which aims to make Oulu as the most measured city in Europe. So, and of course, there are then uh, domain-oriented efforts, as, as uh, in, in the especially in the in the GAIAX hub in Finland, VTT is leading circular economy working group and, and participating in many other working groups. So it is <clears throat> striking that when when this ecosystem form, it is clearly a collaborative effort. And <clears throat> Here you see a depiction of, of three uh, different organizations uh, to, uh, to advance uh, data economy. And, and uh, uh, the first one being big, big Data Value as Service was mentioned, and it has been a public private partnership concentrating on big data and, and AI, bringing together research and technology organizations, universities, and companies to lay out the research scene for, for future developments in Europe. And uh, <clears throat> on the left, you see the data sharing value wheel, uh, which identifies core pillars for, for data sharing value. Uh, and, and in the center is trust, which can be achieved in many ways. And uh, it's surrounded by aspects from governance, people, organizations, technology, and, and, and data. All of these have to be considered when before the wheel of value can rotate. This is this is the message here. And uh, then there are especially technical developments in forum of mentioned GAIAX already and, and IDSA, the, the International Data Space Association. And here is a very rudimentary taxonomy of of these approaches. And and, and, and the short talk definitely makes unjust and I'm really sorry for that. But uh, uh, both of these uh, approaches identify trust and sovereignty as, as central themes. Mm, they promote decentralized approach and look for standards. Uh, there are, of course, differences, but uh, clearly GAIAX raises the notions of trusted and federated cloud, edge, self-description. In IDSA, connector component has a central role, and there's a certification a scheme to promote the trust in, and, and there's a rule book for to help designing data spaces. So this was a bit techy, but what we learned here uh, and that is that the, the data spaces can be approached from different aspects, although the goal, goal is, is uh, very much the same. And, and we, this is something that we have to, when, when, when uh, Marianne was saying, about software infrastructure, what kind of bits and pieces are there in, in the stack to be put together. And we, of course, cannot forget the experimenting and practice here. And, <clears throat> and, and, uh, uh, and, and, and delineating the, the concepts and, and technologies and approaches used with the, with the practice. So these are intertwined. And, and as said uh, earlier, so should be serving, serving a business goal and or a benefit for, for stakeholders. Well, uh, the last slide is, is about uh, that there, there's many things happening. And this is one of the developments is that uh, there are organization on data sharing 
uh, for organization and data sharing forming an alliance to ensure interoperability of, of these uh, different approaches not only interoperability um, maybe but uh, also framing data spaces how do you conceive data spaces and what do you need in order to create them and, and there's all so data spaces radar to like let's say see that what what kind of data space developments there are and 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 count them and and see what, what the, how they how they mature and there's a maturity model under works so all of the this work must be based on on cooperation and and uh, and uh, and uh, all for example any software which is produced is is also open source and and not only specification and running code so so we should be having this all all the, the whole stack done eventually no as you see there are many exciting developments and now happening and and, and the cooperation uh, cooperation is really the word to describe the progress and and VTT and other research organizations, I believe, paved the way to, to alleviate the, the risk investments for European companies. This, this is what we do with, with our, our these test beds. And uh, Digital Europe and Horizon Europe programs are the instruments. Uh, the, 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 uh, Digital Europe is special for infrastructure and, and Horizon Europe for research, but these go eventually hand in hand, uh, as was introduced by Kim Morosi earlier. So VTT is happy to be contributing on research through both of these in, in, in instruments. And, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Domo. Uh, again, looking forward already to the discussion uh, uh, right away to continue uh, on these uh, points that you raised. I will take over now the screen sharing um, so that we can uh, introduce how the breakout rooms uh, will um, go. So the remaining uh, 15 minutes that we have for the discussions, uh, we break into uh, four um, different um, breakouts. Um, and they will be hosted by um, Andy Yogi Poikola about my data, uh, Marianne Derven about creating value in data spaces, Marco Turpainen about data spaces resource library and Domo about research organizations view on Gaia X and data spaces. Um, you all will have the chance to um, pick the group that you want. And you can do that by uh, either opening the breakout uh, rooms function in your Zoom window uh, in order to then pick the group that you want to join. Uh, you'll, you'll see the names there in, the, in that list as well. And if you don't uh, have that functionality open uh, for you right away, then um, please write into the chat so that we can um, yeah, move uh, you to the correct uh, breakout uh, room. So uh, Carolina will open uh, the breakout rooms right away. Um, and we'll start uh, having the discussion uh, in those breakout rooms, and then we'll come back uh, for a final round of reflections and, and next steps. Um, so welcome back uh, from the breakout rooms. Uh, hopefully you had uh, great discussions um, and to hear what was discussed actually in the other groups that you weren't uh, were not there um, I would ask each of the facilitators of the uh, discussions to share one or two key highlights uh, that uh, emerged from the discussion uh, that you had together uh, and I would ask first Antti uh, what uh, emerged from the discussion Sorry. Yeah, so the time ran out. It was terribly uh, short. So sorry for that. Uh, we just were getting to the mood of, of uh, discussing and asking questions. So uh, there was a good question from uh, ODI, really, that what is the my data offering? So how do we actually uh, bring human centricity into the data spaces development? And, and the uh, answer in short was that uh, Yes, we need to work on, on many uh, fields. My data operators is one solution, but it's not, of course, uh, solving everything. And uh, quite importantly, it's to actually understand that human personal data is there and raise the awareness and bring people who know about personal data together with the people who know about industrial data and facilitate the discussion of those two. And ODI has, has great work on the data institutions and we will get that. Uh, then um, 
other question was uh, about uh, the uh, relationship of identity and identity of things, uh, uh, especially when used in in the context of circular economy and, and if my data is dealing with these questions, uh, the identity question and circular economy question, and the answer was that uh, identity is crucial, it's super important, we all should really know and understand what's happening in the EU uh, level, in the EIDAS, and also uh, self-sovereign identity uh, approaches, etc. Uh, important, and yes, my data follows those, uh, and on the circular economy side, I had to say that unfortunately, right now we don't have super strong circular economy my data related cases as of yet. And then uh, third question was coming from Juan, uh, and we unfortunately run time uh, out of time just between uh, Juan's questions. So I hope that you can put it in chat and I can respond there. Indeed, and uh, also just to the continue this discussions also after uh, today in the forums that we uh, is in our um, yeah uh, in front of us. Um, let's then move to the second group and Mariana, uh, what came out uh, regarding trading value in data spaces? Yes, so we had the same uh, issue as uh, Jogi. It's uh, but we had the million dollar question on the table. So what is the new business model? You know, what are the new business models that we need? And not just the new business models, but the question lying directly behind that is what infrastructure to service those business models? Because right now we don't, we, we lack mechanisms to really give people back value for their data. And we also saw that uh, there, there's still a lot you know, data is the new fabric of society and we need a whole new ways to deal with it. So you see discussions, um, yeah, going through each other. That's not proper English, but um, you, you, you'll understand what I mean. So on the one hand, you have this data models uh, around big data sets, but you also have these new business models around more transactional sharing of data. So um, a lot of work ahead, but nothing stopping us. And um, I would like to conclude by, by quoting Tommaso Valetti, who I saw speaking last week, uh, an Italian professor. And, and he said, and I wanna leave you with that. He said, the business model always seemed to revolve about advertise, around advertisements. This is a bit depressing to me. I find it intellectually reductive. You'd think we could do better as humans. We, after all, we invented libraries, squares and churches. So with that thought, I'd like to uh, like to leave this discussion. Thank you. And thank you for this encouragement as well uh, as uh, to move forward. Um, let's hear then from Marco about uh, Data Spaces Resource uh, Library, what uh, questions uh, emerged and what answers uh, were, were discussed. OK, and well, let's continue with the library theme then. Uh, so um, we had a very small group, uh, but but good uh, good points raised, uh, especially by Fredrik uh, uh, from Sweden. Uh, so I mean, focusing on quality, uh, how do we uh, you know guarantee or, or make sure that the overall quality of the resource library stays uh, stays high? So so that's that's a challenge. Uh, what kind of metadata are we going to collect of the resources? So now there is a very first take uh, on on the form that uh, that you can all go and see, but uh, but maybe that's not the not the, the the full story. And and also very much this sort of a maturity of the resources, but maturity of the story behind the resource. So is this for research purposes? Is is like a tech you know demo pilot, or is this already a mature thing that already can be used? Used, and what's kind of the expected roadmap for the thing that the resource is, you know, uh, uh, describing. So, so I think those those were uh, raised as important points that we should emphasize to make it really valuable, really usable. So, uh, so, uh, so how, uh, how, how, for example, if you're an entrepreneur and you want to now start building real business case, real applications. Uh, with data spaces, so so can this resource really help you in guiding uh, what's what's what what are the the best things to uh, to apply for my my uh, my use case? So that was main mainly the 
the, the input and still about this whole library endeavor. So we are very early on and uh, and I have to say we did a bit of a you know minimum viable product uh, pretty much this week to get this material on the site, but uh, but more than happy to hear any feedback, any kind of uh, suggestions. Um, you know, I already heard some interesting ideas for collaboration. So, uh, so we uh, we would be uh, more than happy to follow up on those and uh, and uh, and look forward to making this into a valuable resource for all. Thank you, and indeed, uh, this needs to be a living resource as well that uh, brings really value. And uh, we will welcome all uh, any feedback and and suggestions for improvements. Um, the last group on um, uh, research organizations view on, on Gaia X and data spaces, Tomo, please. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. And, and I think we had the same issue as, as the others. And, and we were a small team, but then again, had, had a nice discussion in that, uh, that short period of time. And um, I, I think the first thing that came came in the, into the, the discussion was the was the human centricity and the, the worry about the human centricity in, in all of these de developments and that, that are now now going on it's a, it's a clearly an, uh, like well my data has been uh, has been very, very much promoting human centricity I know, I know that the Finland has we know that Finland has been has, ha, having a, that that's a very important uh, matter so so now that we are seeing these developments all around Europe so so this this uh, worry is, is there evident and and um, the second thing was was also i, I think it's also uh, sort of like a, like a e equality point of view because the, the, there's that the, there's not not the, the funding issue in different countries is, is uh, different so so it, it may be so that like there's like the, those those who are like putting a lot of effort and money that's good for them but the, then the, the 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 other parts of europe are lagging behind which is not pretty in fact not very good in eventually so so may, maybe there's kind, kind of this kind of disparity that's appearing but um, and third one was was that also uh, listening to to the, those big uh, big countries who are doing this, and it, it seems that the, the the bigger companies are the leading, and and it may be that uh, what what is the role of SMEs then, and the, the smaller companies, uh, and what what happens there? So I, I think this these are really valid concerns. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, and. Uh... Yeah, it's it's just the start uh, this today's meeting. Uh, I am um, uh, I really look forward uh, to continue on those discussions and start finding uh, answers to um, to those questions that were really raised uh, during those um, discussions. Um, as a follow uh, final point, uh, we're. Um, closing uh, the, this webinar very, very soon. Um, and all of the participants uh, of today and re register who, um, uh, who were registered to this webinar uh, will receive um, all of the presentations and the recording of, of this event um, with some uh, follow-up uh, information as well uh, for, for next steps. Um, a few key uh, calls to action from our side still is to um, study the data spaces resources library and also contribute to that. Um, you'll find the link uh, on our um, mydata.org slash data spaces website. Um, if you're looking for partners to your consortia, then do reach out to us so that we can also help you find partners, as well as uh, join the MyData Slack workspace to um, directly um, talk about your idea and, uh, and look for, for partners. And then finally, um, if you'd like to learn more about human-centered personal data, then uh, here are a few uh, links about the core uh, declaration of, of MyData, uh, the different papers that we've published, uh, the link to or how to join the Slack workspace, as well as with, of, of course, love to have you join us um, as a member, either as individual or organizational member. So this is it uh, for today. Uh, we hope that uh, you've uh, enjoyed the presentations, found them useful. Um, we want to also uh, say thank you uh, to the Finnish Ministry of Economic Affairs and Employment who has made uh, this event uh, possible. Um, and, uh, and we look forward uh, to uh, continuing discuss uh, discussions in other uh, forums. Um, thank you and uh, have a really great uh, rest of your day. Goodbye. Thank you.